This is News 8 This Morning. Good Thursday morning, everyone. Getting a little closer to that Friday. I'm Eric Connard. Don't we love Thursdays? Good morning to you. I'm Stella Escobedo. Thank you so much for waking up with us. Let's get right into your top headlines. We begin with this. One of our county's largest school districts will have all of its students learning online through at least winter break. Poway Unified pushed back their start date. News 8's Netta Ronport joins us live from Poway High School to explain here. And uh, my kids go to that district. I understand that they just felt like they didn't want to go back and forth anymore and just decided, hey, let's at least pick a date so that parents will know how long they'll be doing distance learning for now. Yeah, you know, this is the first district actually throughout San Diego County to declare that the whole semester will be virtual instead of waiting to see if we're on the watch list and then going into the classrooms. They're committing to that fall semester staying online, which means students won't be able to walk on campus, go into their classrooms here at Poway High School. Instead, they'll be logging on to their laptops starting September 2nd. That's when the school semester is going to be starting with Poway Unified Superintendent saying that her district had originally pushed back the start date to September 2nd, hoping that San Diego County would have fallen off the watch list by that point. But the governor's office just now clarifying that it'll require two 14 day waiting periods. So that's a total of 28 days for San Diego County it has to be off the watch list, which means our case rate has to be at 100 or less for every 100,000 residents. And then we would get the green light to reopen classrooms. So again, stay off the watch list for 28 days total. That means Poway Unified, the other schools in our district would need to be off the watch list by now. Dr. Kim Phelps said with those revised metrics, it just makes more sense for them to engage in virtual learning for the first half of the school year. Even though a recent poll showed about 70% of Poway parents preferred returning to the classroom, they say more than 70% of teachers wanted to do the same. So right now parents scrambling to figure out how they're going to help their kids learn at the computers and what they're going to do with work and how they're going to manage all of that. Dr. Kim Spelps saying that the district has been refining its virtual instruction models since all of this began back in March. For the sake of our families, our teachers and uh, our students, I think people are looking for some um, answers and we want to ensure and reassure our families that we're ready and prepared to open schools. I feel like the district was kind of put in a, a between a rock and a hard place and that this decision helps them to kind of make sure that they can accommodate everyone equally. That was a Poway mom, Jennifer Ferguson, who had already opted for distance learning for her daughter because health conditions place her in a high risk group. She also works as a special needs instructional assistant for the district and realizes that distance learning does not necessarily work well for everyone, saying that, you know, there are some students out there who do better when they have that human connection. So they're going to do their best in the district and all the other districts that have to remain online uh, to make sure that teachers and students still stay connected through all of this. They've certainly had some time to at least revamp some of the uh, problems that they saw with distance learning the last time around when it was more of an emergency. But throughout the summer, they've really been trying to change it, make it work for everyone as best as they can. Poway Unified emphasizing that by the time January begins, January of 2021, they will be ready for a safe return to the classroom if, of course, we remain off of that watch list for 28 days again saying they want to commit to this fall semester online to keep that stability and that continuity of learning we're live at Poway High School this morning back to you and we can all bring those numbers down by wearing our masks and doing the distance to help out right thanks Nana across the nation students are returning to school raising some concerns about the pandemic in parts of northern Texas parents are having to choose between in person or remote learning they still have that option while in Georgia and Mississippi, more than half a dozen students have tested positive for the virus and dozens of classmates and staff members are now in quarantine. If you look at children, children are almost, and I would almost say definitely, but almost immune from this disease. That caused quite a bit of reaction across the U.S. The president continues to say the virus will go away on its own. 
You know, it's going to be a school year like no other. We keep seeing things changing uh, daily here, right? Well, we hope you'll watch our Learning Curve Back to School News 8 special. It's this Sunday at 8 p.m. I've got a report I'm working on here, so I really hope you'll tune in. We're getting answers for a lot of you struggling parents out there, as well as for teachers and for students. Well, we're going to take you inside the classroom of the future to give you an idea of what that's going to look like. So it's all coming up Sunday, 8 p.m., right here on News 8. The new nationwide weekly unemployment numbers, they are out this morning. Meanwhile, state lawmakers are calling on the governor to address the state's growing backlog of unpaid unemployment claims right away. There's so many people who still need to see that the money, they don't have a job. News 8's Chris Grow is live along Harbor Island, Harbor Island this morning with that part of the story. Good morning, Chris. We've been hearing this for months now, and people have just about had it. Yeah, good morning, Stella. Nearly 1.2 million people filed for unemployment benefits in the nation just last week. And that's pretty important because that marks now 20 straight weeks of more than a million people filing for unemployment. But it's also the first time uh, really since we had that $600 federal boost there to unemployment claims. That's now gone. Uh, so the emphasis is going to be placed now on uh, obviously the state benefits. And right now here in the state of California, lawmakers are pushing about 60 of them pushing for immediate action to address glaring issues with the state's Employment Development Department or EDD, which handles those unemployment claims. Now, the most pressing issue that they've identified is, quote, clearing the entire backlog that would require the EDD to certify all claims, ward those benefits and then resolve any issues after the fact. Now, lawmakers are also pushing for a, quote, governance dashboard that would force the EDD to publicly report key metrics on a weekly basis, which could include how many claims remain unfulfilled. Right now, we know of more than one million Californians that are still waiting on their benefits. Applicants have documented the amount of stress and frustration that goes into trying to hunt down the status of their claims. But the EDD, the EDD says it's only actively working to address one out of five of those outstanding claims. I have nothing without this money. It's financially devastating. The volume of inquiries, I mean, literally thousands of people calling the office, give them a portion of that benefit, help them make ends meet. Now, as for what the governor has done, well, he has assembled a strike team, basically a team that is in charge of trying uh, to get a grip on the customer service and technical glitches that the EDD is experiencing. However, this group of lawmakers want to give that uh, strike team uh, basically to have authority over uh, the leader of the EDD. Uh, they've been critical of, of that uh, leadership there. Uh, and then also we reached out to the governor's office about the letter from the lawmakers. However, the spokesperson wrote back from the, off the governor's office, essentially just highlighting accomplishments from the EDD and not directly addressing the letter from lawmakers. Eric Stella. Chris, thank you for that. Hopefully something does get done. So there are now 348 new coronavirus cases in and 10 more deaths here in San Diego. 5% of the 6,981 tests reported came back positive. The 14-day rolling average remains at 5.3%. And you can now report businesses not complying with the health order by calling 858-694-2900. We have all that information on our website, cbs8.com. Just click on the help button. Meanwhile, the Latino community could be the key to meeting state and county tracing goals. News 8's Brandon Lewis goes beyond the numbers for us this morning. County tracers are making a sizable dent in the backlog of coronavirus cases. Cases hit a new low about two weeks ago when less than 10% of them were being investigated within the first 24 hours. This week, they're getting to more than 70%, but are still well short of the goal. In fact, they haven't hit it in more than a month. This is very good news, and we, uh, again, as of yesterday, were not backlogged with any of our case investigation assignments. So this is definitely, uh, and indeed, a positive finding. 
It's a twofold problem. First, they were overwhelmed by the surge of cases last month. Second, it exposed a problem within the ranks of tracers. While they reflect the diversity of the county, not all communities are being equally hit. So South Bay Community Services launched a new initiative with Prometoras. Because these resident leaders are familiar to them, they're more apt to pay attention, to listen, and to engage. Tracing helps ensure people who had recent close contact with a confirmed positive case are notified, quarantined, and tested. Vital since the disease is spread even when asymptomatic. We're also seeing progress on our case rates, which hit their lowest levels in a month, but continue to exceed the state threshold to even think about reopening any industries. The results over the past seven days, minus the three-day lag, are promising, and it is really uh, thanks to everyone in San Diego that have done their part to change this metric. So we want uh, everyone to keep up the great work and uh, hopefully next week we will see that particular metric also normalize. Brandon Lewis, CBS News 8. And as of yesterday, we're not backlogged with any of our case investigation assignments. So this is definitely uh, and indeed a part. All right, I apologize for that. Let's get your morning rush. The man accused of opening the fire inside a Poway synagogue last year is due to appear in court today. A hearing scheduled for 10 o'clock this morning at the downtown courthouse. The suspect is accused of shooting four people inside Chabad of Poway, killing one of them. He's also accused of setting the Islamic Center of Escondido on fire a month prior. Prosecutors are seeking the death penalty. The EPA is ordering a San Diego-based company to stop selling these products, making false disinfectant claims. EcoShield LLC has been told to stop selling its clip-on badge, EcoAir Doctor Portable. According to the EPA, EcoShield calls the product a personal air sanitizer, but it is unregistered and may not be effective against the spread of germs. The product was being sold on the company's website and at some drug stores in New Jersey and Washington State. Today, San Diego is honoring an SDPD officer for his life-saving actions. Officer Jonathan Weiss is a 22-year police veteran and served in the Marine Corps. Officer Weiss didn't hesitate to jump into the ocean and rescue a family who drove off sunset cliffs back in June. He also was an arresting officer in the Poway Synagogue shooting. For his brave efforts, the city has declared today, August 6th, Officer Jonathan Weiss Day. And a true hero he is. Still ahead, a mother's emotional plea as crews work to recover remains of several service members after a training accident off of our coast. We'll tell you more about that. Plus, the race for the White House is picking up the major moves from President Trump and presumptive Democratic nominee Joe Biden. Then, the story of another hero as firefighters work to get control of the Apple Fire. This is the fire that's burning in Riverside County. Stay with us.